starting at the 25 with a running start. And that will be McCombs making the run. He gets to the 50-yard line, and he will get brought down inside the 47. Starting the game at quarterback for the Watchmen. And that's the snap by Buck. And that one cuts through, and he'll get a gain of nine, and it will be second down. There's flag on the field, but that's a good way to start the game. That's Amari Thomas at running back, really the bell cow of this offense, bulk of the carries, and we'll see what the he, call is. That offensive line was a big part of it, the toss to the right side. He'll cut, he'll get about a gain of five. He'll keep going past the first down marker, and it will be first and ten. They get some big yardage there. Consecutive plays, they go toss, counter. So they fake the toss to the left. They get the defense just to shuffle just that one step, and then Amari Thomas makes the defensive edge man miss with a great move, keeps his balance, and explodes again for another 12 yards. If the Watchmen are getting this consistently all game, you see the big man up front pulling, getting in space, Missed tackle, great block from the wide receiver. If the Watchmen get this all game, this could be a blowout. Nightcrawlers better wake up here in Ohio. And it will be first and 10 for Rokeem Chaney. Play action. Chaney loses his footing. He throws the ball to the end zone. Touchdown. Hashtag watch this. Baltimore strikes first. And what a big play setting it up and taking it down. And that's Hefe. Hefe right to the cameras, way to start the game. They go toss action, and I don't know what the Nightcrawlers were doing in the back. Looked like a zone coverage that got absolutely blown, and Buck starts this game off with a three-play, about 48-yard touchdown drive, and it looked as easy as it has been all season for this super team from Baltimore. Jeffrey Jones on the reception, a.k.a. Everybody's Hefe. open. Every, and you see the... The, wow, my voice is cracking. My apologies. So is the Nightcrawler's defense, and it'll be an extra point. Buck comes out to go for the one-point conversion, and he drops back. Throws it, and that one will get in there. Looks like Nick Mays making his impact early on his game, and that's a championship point. And Matt, that's a great first drive. Nick Mays trying to do it for his mama. Will Baltimore bring it home and make it to the Battle of Bullhead? And when we come back on the other side of this, Mark Bagway, Logo Davis, the Nightcrawlers looking to get into the end zone and tie this one up. Baltimore in the lead. It's the A7FL. And it was only three plays, but they got everything they wanted. They got the play action each time, first two times on the counter, and then last on the touchdown pass. There's Freight Train on the throw off. And here comes the opportunity for the Nightcrawlers to get six points on a dead Ooh, ball run. Does he? And there it is down the sideline, number one making the play. That's and that Keese, and he was making a lot of big plays against the O-Town Orange. This yellow team that they're facing across from a lot different from that O-Town Orange team that they played in uh, Florida a couple weeks ago. To see this matchup, this side of the ball for weeks now. And we see Queasy lost his footing, Did and he was able to get out of the tackle. Listen, no disrespect to our Ohio brethren out there, but I've seen three or four guys already slipping. The, the footing is going to be huge. Guys have to make sure that they have solid footing so they don't let go of a big play. And here comes Mark Bagway in this flag formation. And there's Logo Davis behind center. Play action. He will roll out, throws this ball deep down field. Caught. And that one will be the other it? play. How did he catch that ball? Perfect placement by what? Logo Davis. And they'll call it out of bounds near the 15-yard line. First and 10 Tampa. And that looked like Rico Brown going up top, up top. Logo Davis pump fakes it to Mark Bagway. Everybody's worried about it, and rightfully so. And on the first offensive play for the Nightcrawlers, they get that many yards. And it's just Mark Bagway saying, come on, it's my turn, buddy. And the snap, Bagway rolls out, cuts to his left. Will press down to the sideline. Drives through, stays upright, and gets towards the goal Did he just line. Score? Is he in there? And they're going to call him down at basically the inch yard line. But let's just break down what happened. You watched it from the entire play. Logo Davis is in there calling a play, playing quarterback. That's how football works. But when you're Mark Bagway, you can literally just walk into the backfield, sun the guy who's the starter, take it, and just make something happen out of nothing. This is the same exact situation that Logo Davis was in. Nick Mays chasing him, Wolverine chasing him. He's just a better athlete, and you see here his attempt at the touchdown. And it is a touchdown, Mark Bagway. Mark Bagway finding his way into the end zone. John Gauze back under center, the snap, and there's a handoff. And that one will get a gain of about five. And that's just the difference you see here. It, it, when we watched games of the Nightcrawlers, Deontay Henderson was 
basically unblocked and doing whatever he wants whenever he wanted to. The problem is, is that now he's facing a team in the Northeast. Look at the size of their offensive line. So when they go just basic dive, no pull, no real, you know, complicated structure to the offensive attack. You just hand the ball off to a guy that's going to find a seam and he gets seven yards on first down. That's a really dangerous position if you're going to be facing a quarterback like John Galls that loves to go play action. And child, please, at the bottom of your screen. Second and three, 10-10 left to go in the first quarter. Three on the line. Campo looking to send the entire bay, even parts of St. Petersburg. Second and three, the handoff, and a moderate game, but it'll be third and about one, maybe third and two. Yeah, a much better fill from the defensive lineman there, and that's how you're going to stop him. And look, that looks like a guy we are going to call Frosty because the Nightcrawlers come to this game with four number 11s. They're three shy of the convenience store that's open all the time. So you see here where it was a great block in the play before. It's not as good of a block, and that's how you're going to have to stop this running game for the Watchmen. It'll bring up third down. Look at it. <laughs> the snap. Gauze, the throw, and that one is thrown the complete opposite direction. And a shysty throw thrown to a man with the shysty, and it'll be fourth and seven for Baltimore. And it was thrown on time, but when your receiver isn't running that route, you don't know who it's on most of the time because in certain situations it's, it differs. But it's an it's a advantage night crawlers now, and you see... The initial thought process to maybe go for it on fourth and seven, that's the respect that this Baltimore Watchman team has for the game of A7 and specifically their opponent, but it's Freight Train here for the three-on-one throw-off. Let's see if he can get it out of bounds. And that one thrown, and that one very much inbounds. May be a little closer than they wanted it to be. It'll be marked out at the 35. Logo Davis. First play through 40 yards from scrimmage. The snap off the screen to Bagway. Bagway will run with it. He'll cut through one defender. Hits hus, him with hus. the hus. Hussing like he robbed Fabians here, but he will make a business decision and go down at the 50. Look at that tight coverage from DK Butcher on Mark Bagway. If he's not going up top there, they're crazy. And they will hand it off instead. Cut to the sideline. Slip slide. Call that a play near the 10-yard line. They'll mark him out at the 9. And you saw that's Keese. And he's a playmaker so far we've seen in the championship game a couple weeks ago. And so far today, he's one of the guys that the Nightcrawler is going to get the ball. But based on the way he went out of bounds there, it looks like it's going to be a holding call. Bagway back there. You better play him honest and not let him get that edge. He'll turn it into six points real quick. Bagway looking to put six more on the board. The snap. Bagway with time. He'll throw. Caught. And that will get up. He avoids the tackle. BME Keys cooking up like a quiche. Touchdown, Tampa. And our, our friends in the Northeast have said that EJ has had such a great season. And maybe he has. But what Mark Bagway can do is he makes the defense freeze because they have to honor his run. But he just drops back and throws an absolute on-point dime on the hook. And Keese makes the man miss. And that's an easy way to get six. And if the Watchmen want to stay in this game, they better keep pace because it looked like the Nightcrawlers came here to play some offense. Watching what's going down here this afternoon. Tampa with their first lead of the day and are now looking to make it a seven-point lead. They are up by five. But let's look again. Mark Bagway had a lot of time in the pocket. Great job by that offensive line. And setting up to that touchdown for the Here's a two-point attempt from the 10. And that one's caught, and it's now a seven-point game. A seven-point swing makes the Watchmen watch themselves playing from behind. Can John Gauze or Rokeem Chaney lead the way? What adjustments can be made? Will Charm City find themselves on the wrong side of history? Can Tampa get revenge? It's the A7FL playoffs. This game, in my opinion, the way it's looking, is going to come down to stops. So that stop from the Nightcrawler's defense against John Gauls was huge. And it looks like Rokeem Cheney's probably going to come respond. And here comes the Red Rasta. Rastaman Flash, and he's brought down. And there's a flag on the play, so we might see a dead ball run here. Charles Sharp Jr. Looks like Amari Thomas in the backfield and an offensive line that's going to look to impose their will. First and ten. First and ten. The handoff cuts to the outside. We'll get to the 45 and run out of play. Another, Second down. Another six easy yards from Amari Thomas. He's got the speed. He's got the acceleration. He presses the hole in the middle of the field and bounces it to the outside. That's also a great wash down from the offensive line of the Watchmen. 
and it is Rokeem Chaney back behind center. OG Buck, the handoff, and bouncing again is Thomas, but he is met by that Tampa defense, and they are stopping him just after a yard, a gain of a yard, and it will be third down. The snap. Play action. Finds a way out of it. <laughs> Has plenty of space. Throws, incomplete, almost intercepted on fourth down. Oh, my man's doing, trying to take out a Super Saiyan. He's above level 9,000, but that's great coverage from the Nightcrawlers because Buck had plenty of time back there after he made the man miss. But on third and three, I thought he was going to take a shot downfield to a wide open receiver. That's great coverage on the Super Saiyan. It'll bring up fourth down. But when the guys have the chance to make the play just so far, it's the Nightcrawlers winning. Buck in trouble, will roll out to his right. Throws it, caught. Mm. And there's Cuts Omari the Thomas line. again. So, don't feel sorry for Omari Thomas. will get to the 25 and give the Watchmen some life first down. That's a great play call, but it's also a great way for the Nightcrawler's defense to force an impromptu play from Buck and Amari. And Amari's just better in the route. He's got a mismatch because he's got a linebacker on him. He makes a plant in the dirt and gets wide open. He would be Greg Flutie, wouldn't he be? <laughs> And there's the handoff to Thomas again. They call him the mm. Bell Cow. He powers through a defender. More Cow will, Bell there. And that's a tackle by number six. That's Moose Zaza. Travis Gallardo and on sometimes, the stop. And sometimes Moose find a Mack truck coming right at him. And it, that, was no, that was no Honda Civic, which a Moose will absolutely destroy. <laughs> Mari Thomas is looking to get yards. Tough that's ones. It. And they will give it back to Thomas on More second More tough yards down. on second down. Man, Mari Thomas, man. And you... And we've seen the Watchmen defense make adjustments from that first drive. And now it seems like the Watchmen are kind of finally figuring well, out what those adjustments from Tampa were. Where the Watchmen have yet to score. This is their third drive of the afternoon. Pressing through on third down. Omari Thomas trying to get the first down marker. And he will get there first and ten for Baltimore. So the Nightcrawlers are going to have to stand tall. And one of the guys that's going to be a big factor in that is actually Mark Bagway, who's playing both ways. The snap. Chaney in trouble, rolls out to his right. Will throw. Dangerous. And he is hit for his trouble, but he will keep the ball. Watch this, says Tampa. And the man in the shiesty pulling off the heist. First and 10, Tampa. That was a great maneuver from Buck to make the man miss. But just like he did on the third down, he looks for the throw. And this is the wrong thing to do for any quarterback is throw completely across your body. And it's just a basic layup. I saw that there was a guy maybe sitting in a zone, maybe if you wanted to take that. But what Buck needed to do there is take off. And I'm not going to make any type of claim. But the last time we saw Buck take off against the Tampa Bay team, it was Deontay Henderson that made him. And right here, he's looking downfield, looking for the throw. But right now, you got to take the yardage in front of you because you're throwing ac get across the entire defense. And the only chance that you had was Bone knocking that out playing defense. First and 10, Logo Davis there, quarterback. And Mark Bagway looking to pile on the points against this Watchman defense. The snap, and that's Logo Davis. Logo will throw it on the screen. That is caught, and Mark Bagway making something out of nothing will get to the 13-yard line. It's a good check down when you're about to get yourself a loss of yardage and you just desperately get it out to Mark Bagway. He, he's so confident out there. You see, he gets anything he wants. That was an easy play for him, and it's a first down 12 yards, and my guy Sly Washington, Sly Boogie number 14, had to do everything he could within his power to make sure that that didn't go for six. First and 10 for the Nightcrawlers, and the momentum is on Tampa's side. It'll be first and 10. Look at the respect given at the bottom of your screen. That's a full 10-yard cushion. The snap the throw, and that one Ooh. is incomplete and looking for a flag. Will not get one, and it Could will have been be a second turnover. Down. Logo has pressure in his face, tries to dump the ball quick off the slant. He's nowhere near the receiver, and it was just so off target that he's lucky that it wasn't behind because that could have been an interception and another swing in momentum. But that's kind of the fast and loose way that this Nightcrawlers team plays. They're going to they're gonna press you in stride. Like, that is amazing and elite-level quarterback play, and that's going to be the difference in this game if, he, if they win this game. The snap on third and 15. Bagway in trouble. He rolls out near his own end zone. He will throw on the run. Caught! How the hell did that happen? He stays in bounds, and a German suplex for his trouble. 7-11 serving it up an inconvenient truth for Tampa, but they get the yards. First down, Nightcrawlers. The watchman got to feel good about the tackle because it looked cool, and Matt, 
we know that you love wrestling. So any type of wrestling move. My man hit a German suplex in a football game. But that's game. a crossing route from Rico Brown. That's approximately a 48 to 53-yard throw in the air. And it went over the Watchman defender, perfectly thrown as a right-handed quarterback in Mark Bagway was rolling to his left. There's guys trying to murder him. Everyone wants him dead. And he says, no, thank you. I'm just going to be the best player in this league. And that's one of the best throws I've seen. Look at right over the defender, and he and can tackle as hard as he wants. Watch 7-11. But the fact is, the it's a first down, and the Nightcrawlers are moving. But it was just an on-time perfect throw and then a great play in the open field from a, from a shifty receiver. But, man, Mark Bagway is just teaching us how to play this game at this next level. In trouble is Bagway on first Safe down. Safe again from the pressure. Finds the sideline. He'll just run it in, and he'll go out of bounds. First down for Tampa. Don't don't look back as someone's gaining on you. It's only a seven point game. We got 704 left in the second quarter. And the watchmen are not looking to go home empty handed. The toss on the screen stopped and stifled. They will not get the first down. It'll be second down after the throw to number 13. And they get the quick screen again. And and look, that's a great play from 94 to just break down, make sure he makes the tackle. Good luck defense when Mark Bagway only has to run nine yards and you have to cover for probably like 38 seconds. Bagway will throw this one. It was supposed to ground and it does get grounded. It was intended for number 15. Great play from Nick Mays with the quick pressure. And it'll bring up third and nine. That's, that's really how you got to attack this Nightcrawler's defense. You got to somehow get them out of rhythm. And your, your best bet at times, I think, is if you get a quick throw from Mark Bagway, because the more he extends the play, the more wide open guys are going to be. And Nick Mays has been a huge player for this Watchman team in the playoffs. Yeah, that's Mark, Mark Winway, as we'll call him now. He knew on that second down play that he had to get out of the way <laughs> uh, because it's better to be all, here on third down and ready to rock, and it looks like he's going to go ask for his guy, Logo Davis, to deliver the play on third down. It's interesting, though, because we'll see with this quarterback shuffle from both of these teams. The Nightcrawlers are clearly better with, with Mark Ball. False start again from the Nightcrawlers. He's got the chops to do it. Here's the toss back to Keese. He's going to throw it in the throw end zone. Touchdown! And Guess somehow... who it is, man? Mark Bagway trying to secure the back for Tampa. Out of bounds, Oh, they called him out of bounds. Well, he made the catch. And the pass was high, and that's just within the radius of a guy who looks like he can do everything you ask him to do in football. Interesting play call. They go, th they throw it back to Keese, who had the first touchdown pass. We'll forget. Threw it to Mark Bagway again, but the pressure on him, he's just got to get rid of the ball. And when you got a, you got a receiver down there. Oh, man. Look at the extension. Right into the pocket. It'll be fourth and goal from the nine, but all eyes on Mark Bagway. And he's got the ball after the toss back to him. Bagway throws, caught, in, down, touchdown, Tampa. And when you toss it back to the guy behind the quarterback and the quarterback goes out, it's basically the same concept of the Philly special. Because when you start the play, nobody's really saying, oh, I got the quarterback in a pass route. And when Logo Davis is able to just find enough space, everybody's got to converge on Mark Bagway, who's a threat to run and score. And on fourth and nine, they make it look easy with this really great flag concept, which... Maybe if you can execute it at this level, you could do it, but it's just Mark Bagway being better than everybody else. And my guy, Sly Washington, couldn't land a hard enough hit to dislodge the ball from Logo Davis, and that's a pretty wide margin early in this game. And you would have Rob Fabian right now lauding the Nightcrawler's offensive line, keeping this defense on its back foot. Not trying to, not, a couple of times today, they've seen him get in, but they haven't been able to take Bagway down. And, and here's the, the one-point conversion. Rolls out to his left, Gets the and there's the again. pressure, and that one is caught. So a two-score lead, 21. Uh, oh, there's a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is, but again, when you see Mark Bagway roll out to his left, every single defensive end that's ever played football knows that they basically have to seal that edge and make it impossible for Mark Bagway to get a clear run at the end zone. He's broken free, contained every single time he wants to. And what that does to the defense is now the cornerbacks have to play run defense, which leaves wide open receivers in the back of the end zone from the 10. The snap. Bagway will throw in traffic and caught. Throws to the same guy, same result. And it is a 21-0 run for the Tampa Nightcrawlers. 
And uh -oh. another flag on the field. These referees are really stomping over really good lines, I'm trying to say. Well, that's the D extra West. point is good. That's There's a penalty on the field. The penalty is declined. So the Watchmen scored first. The Nightcrawlers have scored the last three times. 21 unanswered points for Tampa. The Watchmen watching this opportunity pass by. Can Baltimore turn the tide? We find out on the other side of the break. It's about winning the game. And true to form, the Watchmen go with the uh, alternating quarterbacks. And it's John Gauls' second chance in, at this Nightcrawlers defense. Let's see what he does on first down. First and 10, the handoff, and he is met immediately. No, Goss kept it. He'll get the first down and more and run out of play at the 41-yard line. They'll mark him out at the 42, though. Goes read option. Down. Goes read option, and the great play action fools even our cameraman. And that's not even just an Ohio guy. That's the cameraman out there, Brian <laughs> DePaul, getting okey-doked on the fake handoff. But you see the entire Nightcrawler's defense reacts. But the one thing is you look at the Nightcrawler's defense, based on the output that he's been responsible for on offense, the one guy you don't see out there on defense That's is Mark Bagway. And there's the trench lord looking to go inside the trenches. Snap, a handoff, and then immediately met at the line of scrimmage, so that it will be second and ten. Defensive line for the Nightcrawlers, they step up to the challenge, and on first down, up down where the running backs have been getting whatever they wanted to, they go with the TBS situation. And that is Marquise Williams. They go with the TBS situation at running back, and it's our guy making a tackle in the backfield, the second and 10. The TBS lineman looking to make sure that there's nothing very funny about this drive for the Watchmen. The throw caught on the sideline, Child, and they will get please. the first down and more brought down at the 44-yard line. And that's an emphatic hook catch. And then a good stiff arm as he's brought down. He brings the man down with him. And that's the man who, who went up top in the Northeast Championship game against the U. And you see there the respect that they have for Child Please deep game. He goes with the hook. And Gauls is able with a great pocket in front of him. Put the ball right on the money. Great pickup for the running back on the protection there to bring up first down. And bringing some tight pressure except for the bottom of your screen. And here comes the Watchman, the Watchman offensive line needing to pick up the throw. Caught inside the 25. And a big play there for number 81 getting the catch. And that's Hefe making another boss catch. And look, when, when you have a pocket like that, you're going to complete passes. Great play from John Gauls, and we'll be right back. This is the A7FL. Baltimore looking to drive and score for the first time since their first drive of the game, the first drive of the game, on a quick play from John Gauze. Gauze throws deep, wide open, touchdown. Watch this. Baltimore back on the board. And if you're asking who caught that, child, please. Touchdown. Watch me. And they go with a press coverage, and that's just a grown man saying to a small child, get off me. And the reason he's so wide open is because they press cover him. And they will go for the one-point attempt. I believe this is a touchdown attempt. Caught, and that one in there. Child, please! They'll count that one to number zero, child, please. And he's been missing for the early part of this season, but he's definitely made his impact on the back end of this season in the playoffs. He's one of the better wide receivers, if not the best on this roster, but he's definitely setting the tone and attitude with the three huge catches he has on this drive. Two for points, one for a first down. And with the ball right in front of Mark Bagway and through Deontay Henderson. Child, please, with the one-point conversion, brings it back to seven points for the Watchmen. And it's Terrell Bur Burks, number 18, ready to throw off on the three-on-one. And the, uh, the throw here on the three-on-one throw-off. Caught, and that one will go inside the That's five. Keese. And Keese looking to put another six on the board. Keese cuts to gets the sideline, gets past the defender, finds the sideline, Keese in! Oh, Bye. you want to score? Bye. Touch cute, triples it, and he sees the defender, Ricardo Freeman, and he finds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa. Anything you can do, they're trying to do better. Watch this as Tampa takes this game over. And you see the subtle move at the edge. He made Terrell Burks commit to the end inside and the and the celebration's gonna get him a penalty on the extra point but they can dance if they want to that is a great return from Keese and that's another statement this young man is making against the top level of competition the A7 FL man it don't matter we play in a O-Town Orange the Schmotown Schmorange 
or even his team that's dressed like the Spartans from an Xbox game. And the we out here to score six. And right there you see just finding the scene. Look at that shot along the sideline. Shout out to our team there. And you see the dejection on the Baltimore sideline. Nothing As more deflating than scoring a huge touchdown and then having those seven points erased in one second real time zero seconds off the clock by a guy just making a hus hus move turn into a bye bye shout out to my guy rob fabian who for everybody looking for him <laughs> but this will be a one point conversion from the five i think the penalty will be on the extra point here's ricardo freeman the making throw. him throw it and wow what a catch Loco what a play. davis and it's the inverse of what we've seen all day davis to bagway bagway to davis Six on the board and then the extra point. That's four times they've gone for it. Three yep. times they've got it. Four times they've got points. The night crawlers get a stop, get a score on an untimed down. Baltimore looking to do the same. They're down 14. We'll be back after this. We are back here live. The path to the A7FL championship is bringing us to Bullhead City. But today we're in the home of Skyline, Chile, and Joe Burrow, Cincinnati for the A7FL conference championship. Dave Chappelle. And it, yeah, uh, well, using Yellow Springs. I don't know how close that is to Cincinnati. That's true. But it's time for the three-on-one throw-off, and that is a cannon thrown deep. Got and that one, nope, that's 15-yard penalty. That's DK Butcher on the return. And Butcher getting carved up and brought down. It will be first down. There's a flag down, and I'm not sure what it's going to be. Looks like the Nightcrawlers are a little upset with the call, so it might be a re-throw. But... 51 left. It looks like Buck is in there at quarterback with three timeouts. The and here's the snap. Buck will throw and immediately met at the line. And a big play there guess, by the Nightcrawler's defense. And guess who it is. But he's able to get to Amari Thomas on the check down. And that's going to be a dangerous spot for the watchman to maybe get hit in yardage. But credit, credit Deontay Henderson getting there immediately and turning into second and ten. Second and ten after that devastating shot from Deontay Henderson. Buck in trouble, will throw a dart, and that one hits the ground. They'll say that's incomplete. That was intended for number number 81, that's Jones. Fifth throw, we saw what John Gauls can do. Not that Buck can't, but third and 10, 113. Let's see what Buck draws up to try to get his men open. Third and 10. Buck throws, and that is caught. And he will run that one. They'll see if they, they'll call that where he was down. He wasn't touched. Anthony Elliott is. And Baltimore with a minute and one second. They had that play inbounds. He was tackled inbounds. So they will use one of their timeouts to stop the clock. Interesting call timeout there. It's almost if like they want the ball back. But credit Buck there. He steps up in the pocket. Pressure all around him. Throws an on-time accurate throw. You know, the guy has to go down to make sure he secures the catch. But it's better to get the catch then miss it and get the extra yards running. Not a great throw, but that's an amazing catch. A litany of pressure today, but no sacks on either of the quarterbacks. The throw by Cheney, and that one is caught, and that's at the 10. F.A. again F. A. on Jones. the cross route. They go trips to the bottom of the screen, and they go cross, cross, cross. Buck finds it. Got, got enough of a space to find the window. And another first down, and they're on the move with still two timeouts. Buck is upset. And Tampa will call timeout. They will burn their second timeout, one timeout remaining. You can see the frustration on Rokeem Cheney's face. Cheney, one interception on the day, and that was during a run, quarry where the Nightcrawlers went on an unanswered run of 21 straight points. He's just focused in that pocket, finds his man, and he's wide open. Good tackle to converge on the play, but... Really, the timeout is called because what Buck is trying to do there, he might have even called two plays in the huddle try to catch the Nightcrawlers off guard. It's a smart play to call a timeout if you're caught out of position, and that's one of the tactical type of maneuvers that we know OG Buck is constantly putting in there. But, you know, even though Child Please is kind of more or less the uh, John Gauls quarterback, he's going in there to set the attitude for this Watchman team. And it'll be first and 10 with 43 seconds left in the half. And, and is that eligible kind of Statue of Liberty formation guy, Mari Thomas, eligible tight end on the right side. The snap, the screen, kick back to 15. The throw, caught, touchdown! Hefe Jones again when it counts. He has been the star for the Watchmen offense today, and it makes it a one-score game. 28 to 20. And the Watchmen go into their bag, and they pull out a Nightcrawlers-type play. They throw it back to their 
traditional wide receiver, and even though he doesn't throw a perfect spiral, goes right to the wide open wide receiver in the middle of the end zone. Look, the, the pass is backwards, so that's a key there. And you got to honor his running ability. Gets right back into the pocket and fires a dart to the middle of the field. Hey, if it's not spinning and quacking in there, it doesn't matter if it's a touchdown. And that's Hefe making another boss catch and bringing this game back to within eight. Going for the score here. The, well, it's a wobbly throw, too. Just great placement and no one there to get Jones. Three guys in the backfield, but no one there to pick up that receiver for you. This game, even when you feel like the momentum is securely on one side, it's been shifting back and forth, but these championship points are going to be huge, and Buck is going for one from the five. The snap. Going for the one. Look at Try the to be down by one, and that's in there, and it will be a one-score game, 28-21. And on the other side of this, we'll see what uh, if BME Keys can get another touchdown and an untimed down. We're seeing who makes their way to Bullhead City. We'll be back on the other side. It's the A7FL Conference Championships. We are back live on A7FL.TV and TheZoneCaffeine.TV. Shout out to record viewership over there today. If you're watching us live over there, come say hi. Hang out in the chat. Let us know what's going on. And also on Fox 5.2, I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Hammond. And this is a wobbler thrown into the bat near the end zone, but it's received at the one. And here comes an opportunity for Keys. Keys looking to go 99 yards. Keys stripped and brought down. And he keeps the ball, but he brought down inside the 40. And there's EJ making sure that it doesn't happen again. But Keys is making his claim to be one of those returners that we talk about. Uh, and hey, so far, he's been certainly dangerous. He makes you kind of sit at the edge of your seat, if, especially if you're a Baltimore fan, but with 36 seconds left, one timeout. We'll see what the Nightcrawlers offense can do because every time they've gotten it to two scores, the Watchmen seem to have some sort of answer, and he almost has the seam. Great play from EJ there. Makes up for the time he missed the tackle on the touchdown earlier, but it's Mark Bagway back in at quarterback. Logo oh. Davis at the top of your screen. 21-28, your score. Bagway in trouble. Throws this one. Intercepted! And their Watchman defense, when they needed to step up, got the stop, and they bring down the defender, but he looks hurt on the field. Flag on the play, and it looks like we're going to need to take a break. If the Nightcrawlers wanted, they could have just ran the ball. Sound, sound similar? Ran the ball, took it to half, you know, been happy with the seven-point lead. But with a, with a quarterback and a playmaker like Mark Bagway, you're going to let him rock. You're going to let him roll. This time, Ricardo Freeman, Nick Mays, they make the play. They get hands on the guy that is the only guy that nobody's been able to tackle so far. And he turns the ball over. This could be huge if the Watchmen are able to take advantage of this. But more important than anything, this is one of those stops the Watchmen needed. First and ten. Clock continue, starting to count down after the turnover by Florida. Tampa looking to assert pressure the same way the Watchmen did. That one caught, though, by Antoine Matthews, and they'll call him down yeah, at the 30-yard line. And the Super Saiyan there, not over 5,000, but doing enough to get the first down. And they will call him down, but the clock should continue to run, Corey. I'm not sure if they're they're saying it's incomplete, because guys are saying that he's down, right? So it, if he's down normally on a catch... You can get up and run if the, nobody forced you down. He was so wide open. If John Gauls can put that ball a little bit easier in there, it's a better catch, but looks like just misses it. We'll see what the call is here. It looks like they're moving him forward, so it's definitely up. Oh, nope, second and 10. Ruling is incomplete, and that's why there's still 19 seconds left on the clock. Here, the clock's running. Three wide receivers, 15 seconds down by seven. The snap. Pressure coming. Gauls will get on his bicycle. Could be the last play of the half, and he throws like it is, tipped up, and that one will be incomplete. Interesting to see them not throw an all, a defensive pass interference penalty there with a similar play on the first play of the game. That contact midair, it was called, so, you know, Corey Hammond going a little narc, no problem, but this time I'm on Baltimore's side. But regardless, it's a decent enough coverage from Keese, but there's only eight seconds left. And the snap by Gauze. Last play of the half. 
Gauz in trouble again. He has a bunch of time. Now the pocket collapses. The throw caught, and he will find a way to evade the defender. Double zero looking to do some pitchy pitchy, but he's brought down before any woo-woo, and that's the end of the half. And the watchman finding a way in the last few minutes of this first half to cut. Oh, and we have a flag on the field, but Right now, it looks like the Watchman may get another chance to put six on the board. This will be a terrible mistake from the Nightcrawlers. Looks like they're calling holding in the back end, so it'll be an automatic first down, and it will be another opportunity for the Watchman. So this is, this is more than just hidden yards. This is a free play that could have went to halftime, up by seven. This is the, these are the types of plays that were the difference in the last time these two teams played a year ago. Down by seven, Baltimore looking to walk into the second half tied before they give the ball back to BME Keese and a Tampa Nightcrawlers team that's already scored on the three-on-one, the snap. In trouble, Gauze gets Pressure. caught, and he will get the ball swatted away. They'll call that one a Sly fumble. Boogie. Sly Boogie, Sly Washington will get out of play, and that Luke will Baker's be how we dunk end. from the 10, but that, that'll go out of bounds. It is not the end of Space Jam. He did not drink any of Michael's secret stuff, but at the end of the half, the Watchmen find life after being outscored 21-7. to They find a way to score enough points to put it down, 28-21. The Watchmen, though, will have to throw off at the half, and Tampa will try to find a way to get BME Keys to get six more points on the board. 28-21, it's close, it's contentious, and here we see John Gauze Jr. trying to make something happen and trying to get that, that quick toss, trying to keep the play alive, and trying to keep the Watchmen's hopes of Baltimore's first championship in five seasons alive. Can Gauze and the two-headed Hydra find a way out? We'll find out after this. It's halftime. What we don't need to at all talk about is how both of these teams have basically come to perform. You see the, the, the statistical analysis of this game. It pretty much breaks down to these. Both of these teams are performing to where we might expect them to perform. The two turnovers are huge, but for me, it's, it's, it's a one-score game, and it's going to be a heavyweight brawl until... This game reaches uh, four zeros because, Matt, it's in my opinion now, what you're doing as a defense is you're just looking for stops. You're just trying to stop the other team from scoring on every single offensive possession. Because the Nightcrawlers, they don't even play first down, second down, third down. They're going in most of their plays, except for that one time we saw Logo Davis go back-to-back -back quick screens. They're going for the throat almost every play, and whether that's Mark Bagway designing it or he's having to do it because they're only going with two offensive linemen and a free rusher, and basically the offense is him making that man miss and putting pressure on the defense with his legs and then throwing dimes all over. The ball might be in the air again, and they take out Keys, but it's going to be freight train here for the three-on-one, and maybe the best second half of football we've seen all season ready to kick off, and don't go anywhere, gentlemen. The ball Ladies. is thrown, and that one will be picked up inside the 10-yard line. He breaks Shot. through one defender, breaks through the other, bye. and he's got nothing bye. but the sideline in the end zone in front of him. Slip, slide, touchdown, Jaquan, oh, pardon me, number 25, Dante Perkins. Perkin up in the end zone. Dante Perkins lighting the lamp and making it a two-score game for the Nightcrawlers. Now, I'll allow dancing after a great touchdown like that, and just like Keese's return on a three-on-one, he just makes the subtle move to get the space, and you see the elite speed that we've been talking about all season. What's up, Rico Brown? And whether it's 5 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon, it is Bagway getting sent down to the turf for the first time today, but it's 34-21, two-score lead for the Nightcrawlers, the Watchmen, with no time taken off the clock, Corey. And here he goes. Gained some ground past the 50. Good field position. He's down immediately, but... Pretty good coverage there, because if you only get to 45 when you start at the 30, you only get 25 yards. Not a great return, but nonetheless, great field position. And that's the problem if you're going to keep talking and you got to walk back to your sideline after running to the Nightcrawler's sideline. And we'll see OG Buck. So first and 10. Watchmen need to answer after that three-on-one return. And here's the play action from Buck. Buck 
like a freight train. Throws this one. Caught off the hands. Who is Finds it? Finds the seam. Sorry. That's Omari. Touchdown, Baltimore. Finding a way to make this a one-score game again. And Hefe Jones hyping him up, putting six more on the board. But it's still a long way to go. Long way to go. But if you're going to give that long of a time for OG Buck in the pocket, somebody's going to be wide open down the field. And it's his check down, man. Not checking down, but going deep after the play action. And Amari Thomas, I'm not sure what the penalty is, but the score will stand. And just as quickly, maybe not just as quickly because zero seconds came off the clock, but almost as quickly as the Tampa Bay Nightcrawlers start this half off with a bang, the Watchmen respond. The Nightcrawlers are going to have to win this game, honestly, and fight till the end because the Watchmen are going nowhere. They came to Ohio to play, and they're not leaving until the game's over. And if you're going to leave a man like that wide open, Deontay Henderson may be taking people's souls, but in coverage, gets burnt there. There's Park Heights Boogie himself, Ant Mo in motion. Buck throws it. Intercepted, intercepted by Bagway. But that won't do anything but keep them from scoring another point. 34 to 27, your score. The Watchmen fighting back, but on an untimed down, we'll see the Nightcrawlers again. And if, that, if they don't get them on the three-on-one, they may get them on offense. It's back. It's fourth. It's a one-score game. We'll see what happens on the other side. Who's punching their ticket to Bullhead? It's the A7FL Conference Championships. And it will be with 13.45 left to play second and 10. See, they go two linemen, four wide. And they'll split those wide receivers a little further towards the sideline. Bagway off the screen, fakes it, throws off, off his the back whip. foot. Caught! Rico it's Brown! Tried. Rico Brown into the official! Oh, and he Franklin. bounces off of Will Franklin like a pinball! Stays upright, cuts to the sideline, and brought down at the 32. And they talk about the refs keeping points off the board. That just happened literally, but Tampa off rip, getting the ball back and driving down the field. How do you stop that? As a defense, Nick Mays, Ricardo Freeman contain Mark Bagway perfectly. And if we do get this replay, just look at the position the quarterback is left in with a free rusher in his face, no time really in the pocket. He throws an absolute dime. But that's just how fast Rico Brown was running down the seam with the ball in his hands. I that even it was the seven ref. On seven, not eight on seven. But even the ref couldn't get out of the way. And we'll see. Off here your again. back foot to throw the ball. Perfectly placed. Now, now, Sly wait got caught it. on his heel. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fuera! Setting the pick like Malone in the 90s. In trouble. And that one will be tossed to someone on the sideline. Out of play. Second down. That's going to be called a... Not, they are going to call it intentional grounding. I'm just making sure. Intentional grounding. Mark Bagway ran out of the pocket, but he doesn't make an attempt to throw it beyond the line of scrimmage, so that could be a loss of down and yardage. Basically works out to be a sack. Credit Johnson, who has a touchdown pass in this game, to save the touchdown. But after the, the, the pressure on Mark Bagway, it'll be Logo Davis back in at quarterback. It'll be second and 20 after the intentional grounding. Second and 20. Logo Davis in, he'll toss the bag way. They oaky, they doke, and there's the catch. And that will get them to the 36. And you see the ferocious pressure. That 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 ball security tossing it back and forth is going to be interesting, but Mark Bagway doesn't look like he'll be stopped on things like that. But he's still making the plays, third and 13. Throw it back to Bagway. Manufacturing their own center, There's Logo Davis. Davis with the catch. He gets past the defender. He cuts up and he laterals it. And that oh one no! Will go out of play. That one was intended to be tossed to number seven, Rico Brown, but Brown not able. Eventually, Mark Bagway just takes enough time being elusive that Logo is wide open. And Antmo misses the cutback tackle here. Mark Bagway gets the edge. Bagway to the sideline, stays upright into the end zone. Will they give him six or will they call him out? Looks They'll like call Nick, him out at the two. Yeah, Nick Mays was able to just get him outside because he got the corner, got up the sideline, and Nick Mays just gets enough of a hand on him to pull it out. So it'll be second and goal from the seven. Bagway, and it seems like a flag on the play. They go delay. He's not able to get free for the end zone, but it looks like they got the yardage, but we'll see what the penalty is here. He's just been making their job pointless because he makes the play even better when they're called upon. And it'll be second and goal after the holding call. 
from the 17. 8.55 left to go. Quick pressure again. And that's Nick Mays right, again. Throws to the end zone. It Call touchdown! Matter. That's Nick Mays again getting into the backfield again. That's Ray Chalk again getting free. And whether it's quick pressure, late pressure, edge pressure, middle pressure, Mark Bagway is cool under pressure. And another six points on the board for the Crawlers. And the Night Crawlers setting a tone here. And a lot of people said they weren't going to be able to do this against the Northeast team. And right now, it looks like a completely different scenario than a lot of people were talking about heading into this Sunday. Well, tell, tell that to Mark Winway because he's been playing this style of football probably his entire career as a night crawler. They only go with two offensive linemen, so you're going to have to find a way to make the guy who's coming after you miss. And with pressure in his face all day, he's athletic enough and pinpoint enough with his passes to throw over the defender underneath and into the end zone for the touchdown. Here's the one-point conversion again. <laughs> Makes another watchman fall and finds a way to get the conversion. 14 points is the lead again. Nightcrawlers, another commanding two-point lead. Let's see what the watchmen have to do to answer. They haven't failed to answer back yet, Matt, but this is pretty alarming based on how good the crawlers have been. 41-27, your score. We're live on Fox 5.2 and Caffeine.tv. I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Hammond. And we see these plays to the end zone today. Mark Bagway has found a rhythm in this Watchman defense that was so destructive. And it'll be a free run from Johnson from the 25. He's got some space, gets past the first man. And he will go out of play at the 44-yard line. Seeing if he can cut this back to a one-score game with 8.30 left in the third quarter. Both of these teams have been high-octane offense pretty much all day for a couple, you know, save a couple of drives. As great as the Nightcrawlers' offenses look, their defense let up a lot of points. Here's John Galls on the choice option again, gets the edge. Galls will run out to the 37, and it will be second down. And number zero, Child Please, who's been a standout in this year's playoffs. Got the Beijing in the beard and looking to go up top again, potentially. It's number nine, Slick, with two Cs in the backfield. And the Super Saiyan, Antoine Matthews, number 24, at the bottom of your screen. The snap, play action, throw, and that one's caught. <laughs> and Super Saiyan Antoine Matthews will get to the 42-yard line. He is not happy that he didn't get to go that far and do his... Uh, uh, turn Super Saiyan. Yeah, but you see what their game is, and, and John Gauze will throw the ball accurately on time to the hook almost every time, and when the defensive coverage from the cornerback position for the Nightcrawlers, maybe maybe they're missing a certain PhD doctor, Matt, I, but when they give them six, seven yards, that hook, that slant is there every time, and so far, you know, as, like I said, Matt, as great as the Nightcrawlers' offense has been and as great as Mark Bagway has looked in all of those high-pressure plays, Eventually, this defense is going to have to stand up and stop them. And it'll be first and 10. Watchman still on the move. 6.38 and counting here. Lineman will consider himself an eligible receiver. That's number 70. Maurice oh, Taylor, Taylor. Two wide receivers set. The handoff and immediately brought down. The Nightcrawlers' defense stepping up here. Yeah, and when you need your defense to make a play, you, you look no further on the defensive side of the ball than number nine, especially in the run game. Deontay Henderson sniffs out the draw. It's a four-yard loss on first and ten. You know, it's a, a huge difference when, when Gauze gets the, the choice option and it's second and four. You can call whatever you want. When you get that, that big of a loss on first down and you're forced into a second and 13, you're playing right into the hands of the defense. And Gauls might have to go with a pass here. But again, the, the coverage defensively from the corners, they're giving them space. They'll rotate. Motions out to the slot. Matthews at the bottom of your screen, second and 13. The throw, caught. First down, no. They'll get stopped inside the 15-yard line, and it'll be third down for Baltimore. They might go up top and take a shot on third and five, knowing that they'll go for it on fourth. Just child, please. 
Third and five, the snap. Goss will throw this one to the end zone. Please. They come down with it. Flag Shout on the play. Please. Flag on the play. They don't they don't call it a touchdown. They call it they call it incomplete. Oh man, that was so listen, that's exactly what I saw was happening. And you saw the busy hands from the corner. He knew he was put in a tight spot. Chow please beats him just enough. And then he has to go for the penalty. Look at the look at the coverage here. It's actually really good. But the ball's placed even better. And if there's a line straight down there, that looks to me like it's in. They should go for the extra. They should go for the review because he's inside that G pylon. And whether they get it or not, the ball interference down that far is going to be first and goal from the one. So it'll be first and goal. And this offensive line looks to make their impact known in this game to cut it back to six uh, to eight points. The handoff. No, they'll keep. Oh, he'll keep it. Number thirty-four, but he'll Does be he brought in? down. They'll call him inside the goal, outside the goal line at the half yard mark, and it will be second down. They get the penetration from the defensive line, but it doesn't matter because nobody's looking to tackle that man, number 34. That's a TBS situation. And second and goal from the one. Let's see if they go they go back to him. They might, they might, they might okie dokie with Omari Thomas set up to the right. Nope, they'll run it again, but they will be stopped, and there's a flag on the play. This is the previous play. You just see he gets some momentum going, and he's down for sure right inside the one-yard line. But credit, there's a penalty flag, but credit the defense there getting the penetration. But it'd be offsides. That's how they can get through so quickly. I just want Sonic Again, second rings. and goal That's from the in I inches. I want to see Sonic rings. And Here's Amari again. Thomas. And they knock three times on the window, and will they get what they want? They will call him Ooh. in. They will say he went back to the one-yard line. Pause at the line of scrimmage so he can get a push. Here's third and goal. Third and goal, and they will be driving in there. And Amari Thomas, the touchdown. Touchdown, Baltimore. Watch this. It's a one-score game again. But the Nightcrawlers still have the lead. And there's Omari Thomas, who has had one heck of an afternoon for this Baltimore Watchmen team. I would say he's been the most important piece today no, for this Watchmen No Watchman question offense. about it. Maybe not just today, the whole season. You see, it's a one-on-one -on -one right here. Who's going to win it? And it's Amari Thomas that makes the extra effort with two guys on him. He's just a finding a way to win every single matchup for his team. And whether he's catching passes out of the backfield or he's punching it in on third and goal, must have. These championship points are huge. They're going to go for one point right now, Matt. If, if my math serves me correct, it's an eight-point lead for the Nightcrawlers. This one-point conversion is huge because it'll keep it within seven. The one thing you want to avoid if you're the Watchmen is that, that, that dreaded nine-point spread, a two-possession game, and here's Gauze. The throw, and that one is intercepted. That will kill the play dead. But now it is a nine, an eight-point game. That now the Watchman defense has to stop a, an extra point attempt from the Nightcrawlers if they score. Because if the Nightcrawlers can get eight points or seven points, that's a two-score game. And we will be finding a way, whether it's a Dutch angle or a full angle. Will the Watchman find a way to stop the Nightcrawlers? We see a three-on-one throw-off after this. We are back live. It is an eight-point game. It's the A7FL Eastern Conference Championships. I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Hammond. And this game continues as we get closer and closer to the top of the hour when we'll see Ohio and Nevada play each other for the first time ever. This second matchup between Tampa and Baltimore has really reinforced the rivalry between them. Well, let me just say this. The, the Watchmen have had every opportunity to say, oh, man, because of how deflating all of these scores have been for the Crawlers. And here's another opportunity for Keese. Yeah, Keys looking to light the lamp. He cuts through two defenders. He gets through number 30, but he is brought down before midfield. And Baltimore pilot it on there, and it continues to be spicy between these two teams. It has been close. It has been contentious. Biggest drive of the game for the Nightcrawlers so far. And here's Logo Davis. Davis. Will throw to the sideline, caught and out of play. Oh, are they going to give, give him, him the catch? The first down. He looked like he had a foot in, and they will call it incomplete. It will be second down. He had space, and Logo Davis put the ball where he needed to be. It was it, it's pretty decent coverage, so he can't throw to a wide open guy in the middle of the field. He has to throw away from the defender. But you saw there the rush goes and waits for Mark Bagway. They're not even worried about Logo Davis, and it gives him the opportunity to try his best. Oh, he missed. 
He oh, had a yeah, burnt. He was out. I was, was trying out. to give him credit. I've been trashing him for so long. That's just an out of bounds play. You should have scored a touchdown second and ten. Davis tosses back to Bagway. Bagway will throw. Cough the hands oh. at a receiver. And now that's a win for the Watchmen because they put the ball in a perfect position. Now, credit Flynn for, for going up there and almost making a play. And credit Ant Moe for making a little bit of a tight throw. But it was beefy. The last guy you would say name-wise to, to, to stand in front of Mark Bagway and keep him from running. But that may be the accumulative pressure and, and workload put onto this young man as they give it right back to him. Let's see if he can stay this elite for four quarters. Throw to the sideline. It's caught. Finds a way around There's the Rico defender. Brown again. Rico Brown. Rico Brown. That man is Rico. Suave as hell. Into the end zone. 47-33. Defenses bye, stay home. Bye. Scoring is in bunches here. And these two offenses have been going stride for stride. But another two-score lead for Tampa. And again, Mark Bagway, you have to respect him as a runner because of how dangerous he is. And he just finds a wide open guy. Perfect throw right to his catch radius. He's catching it in stride and he can attack the defense with full speed. And what we've seen from Rico Brown is that when he has the ball in his hands, he's looking for six and likely going to get it unless it's Will Franklin stopping him midfield. But again, Tampa Bay up 14. If they get the one here, it's up 15. Matt, in my opinion, they could go for 16. But if they can keep it, what, what, what a great game so far from Mark Bagway. Bagway as he rolls, rolls out. out, gets into the end zone, and on the one-yard, one-point conversion, we see here the touchdown on the replay. It's 48-33, Mark Bagway to Rico Brown, over 30 yards to the end zone. That man has had a historic day as a receiver, and you could say that about a lot of players on this Nightcrawler team for having a historic day, really setting themselves apart here, and some people comparing the Nightcrawlers to how we've seen the DC buzz down bad a couple of times this season. You're going to let up open receivers, and Mark Bagway has been throwing dimes all game, and here's Logo Davis with the high throw to lower one. He secures it, and let's see what he can do with it. Has some space. Cuts to the sideline. Keeps it in bounds. He finds a seam into the end zone. He's frustrated. He was Oh, told. they say he's they out of bounds. He said he's out of bounds. And if he is, if they blow it dead, you can't replay it and give him the end zone back. So what looked like it could have been a real dangerous situation turns into another situation with a pretty good field position. And again, Baltimore. You know, one of the one of the things that we you know, when I'm doing my, you know, two quarterback system tirades and, you know, my bias and all that, one of the things you don't think about is the stress, the the you know, the the stamina stress it puts on a guy to be drive in, drive out as we go back to Rokeem Cheney at quarterback, but Mark Bagway's in every single possession. These quarterbacks at least have been going back and forth. Great throw, but just a little bit out of bounds for Johnson. On A7FL.TV, we're on the road to Bullhead. It is the pressure and the internet getting to us all here. It's third and four. Darnell Richardson said my hair gel. And here's the trip. Has throws, a wide and open. Caught, and again, Jones and Omari Thomas have been the two stars today, but they wave it off. They wave off the touchdown. It looks like there was a flag on the field. I don't know. They're saying the play is over. I don't know what they're saying. Looked like it... it Everybody was running slow a little bit there, but based on what we see, the movement of the teams, it's a nine-score game, Matt, because if they go down to that five-yard line for the extra point, you see OG Bucks celebrating with Hefe, another boss play. Both of these guys, Jones and Amari Thomas, have shown up every single time that they've needed, and with that being a it, touchdown, Matt, it, it, it's going to be a one. They're going for two from the ten. They're going for two from the 10 to make this a nine-point game. Two from the 10 right eight now. Eight-point game, pardon me, an eight-point game. Well, right now, Matt, it's nine. So if they don't get it, it's still a two-score game. They would have to get two touchdowns to win this game. That means they need to get two stops on offense. But if they can cut it to seven here, that'll be huge. But they can't miss this, Matt, if they want to keep this game close. 
Rokeem Chaney with the season on his back, throws it, tipped, intercepted, and when it counted, there's 12 minutes left, but right now the Watchman defense has to be like the 85 Bears. The Nightcrawlers get it in an untimed down after this. Who's walking out with the Eastern Conference chip? We're going to find out. Hold it on to the internet and move it on. We're back after this. So this three on one, they need to stop them, but in general, Watchmen need to get two stops and two scores to take the lead back in this game because the, the, lead, the lead sits at nine, and here's Keese on the return. Cuts through and brought down, and not really the exciting three-on-one that we thought we were going to see. He goes with the hesitation move, but no hesitation in Sly Washington and Ricardo Freeman, the Wolverine there. But this last 10 minutes, they're going to have to figure out how to play football the right way. They toss it back to Bagway, and he pump fakes it. Bag Has a man open. Deep downfield, caught, and he will go down at the 40-yard line. Tariq Johnson wearing number 69, and when number 69 comes out for a route, you don't even cover him. But he goes with the pump fake to the quick out, and then nobody covers the deep route. They, they're able to manage getting back into tackling him to save the touchdown but another opportunity for the watchman with an awesome down and distance to go and it's just mark bagway making a better play watchman desperately need to stop here let's see what the rare with, let's see what the nightcrawlers learned from last year this is going with a handoff which is probably a good move he and makes the move to they give it to the big man and a big man gets to the 30 yard line and he is brought out of play but it is first down linden rowles with a great run he sets it up by pressing the hole and a guy that big, you got to honor him, running straight. He, get, he puts on the Huss move, gets the corner, and gets the first. That's the handoff. Again to the big man. He will circle another big man. That's wow. number 23. He finds a way to spin zone himself. That's Demetrius West getting the second down. If they get the two-point conversion, it's a three-score game. And we'll see how well they, they've taken math over their years in grade school down in, in Tampa. Because if they don't go for two, they're not going really for the win. So if the Baltimore even give up a touchdown here, they just can't give up a two-pointer because they're still down by two scores. Here's Mark Bagway, Bagway again. Bagway throws it, caught, slip slide into the end zone, and they will. He's waiting. This is actually a smart play, and that's Rico Brown who has yet to score. There he goes. Finally, DK Butcher makes sure that they can save as much time off the clock, but that right now, you do the math, that's 15 points, and Mark Bagway is dancing and waving. Did they learn? I don't know. Mark Bagway looks for the one-pointer from the five. We've seen Baltimore come back against this Nightcrawler team before. The throw to the end zone, and that will be incomplete. It would be Charles Sharp Jr. with his opportunity to score without points off the board. That's really been the difference in this game. The two returns from the Nightcrawlers are really the difference in the score. And there's Logo Davis with a bomb to the air. And the Red Rasta with an opportunity, and he's brought down hard. And he gets up, he pops right back up, which is great. But the great field position the Watchmen have had all day seems to end with Perkins, who has a return for a touchdown making his presence felt on the coverage team. And it'll be John Gauze out at quarterback for the Watchmen with about 6.50 left in the game. See what he can do to answer the Gauze score. throws it, caught. Will they call it a complete pass? They will call it complete at the 31, at the 30. They'll mark him down at the 30. It'll be second down. Super Saiyan Matthews with the pickup. Keep them out of the end zone. That's what they want. Here's and Gauze. there's Gauze on second down. He'll avoid getting sacked. And they will There's get to a the great block line. from the Super Saiyan. Sideline getting to the 32, and he will go from the 30 to the 32, crossing over the 50-yard line. It'll be a first down for Baltimore as they drive down the field. Tampa's proven that they can ball out for sure, but what they're going to have to do to win this game is make the tackles that they just missed. And you see here, John Gauls is not the guy that that is incapable of running, like myself, but he wants to throw it. And if Deontay Henderson makes that tackle, which nine out of 10 times he does, that's third down. But what, what Matthews with the block and Gauls with the acceleration is able to do is they turn a bad play into a great one and it'll be first and 10. And the ball is on the other side of the 50. The watchman, as always, as they have all game, their offense is moving. Again, the score is 15, Matt, so all they have to do is score twice and get one of those, or both of those extra points, 1-2 one, and 1-1. One, one. Tight coverage on Antoine Matthews, top of your screen. First and 10, six minutes remaining. 
throw, and that one will be incomplete. That's in the dirt, and that was intended for number 15, second down. It'll be third and five, which is manageable even if you get the incompletion. But you see what the, the adjustment that the Nightcrawlers have made on the corners is they're not giving up that easy six-yard hook, those six-yard slants. They're playing tighter on the top of the screen and tight enough on the bottom of your screen with Mark Bagway playing corner. The throw to the end zone, caught, and into the end zone, Jones with the touchdown. Jones always finding a way like Omori Thomas Balls. to keep Baltimore in this game. And did you see how perfectly that ball was thrown because it was just within the reach of Hefe and just out of the reach of Mark Bagway, and once again, the Watchmen answer with a touchdown, but now where the, pull, where the points sit, they got to make these extra points. Whether they go for one or two, they have to make it because if they miss it here, it's too many points for them to come back with one score. And this could be a one-score game. The, the crawlers who have already started dancing maybe have not learned anything because both of these quarterbacks, all three of these quarterbacks, all four of these quarterbacks, all six of these guys who have thrown passes have found open receivers all game, and it's just come up to these championship points. One-pointer from the five. Watchmen need it. Down by nine. The throw. They get the conversion Beefy when it counts. It. And they cut it to eight. So once again, one score game. Five minutes left in this game. Three on one loading. 54 to 46. Your score. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. And folks, getting a little deja vu here. Yeah, it feels almost exactly like this game. And honestly, if you told me that I had to sit in a room and watch two teams play a seven NFL football for 24 hours straight. Just give me, give me whoever the Baltimore team is versus whoever the Tampa Nightcrawlers are because we've got nothing but great offensive football, spectacular offensive football. This is the highest level of the A7FL, and you can see there are so many playmakers on both sides of the ball making their presence known. You have gotten everything that you've wanted when you've gotten it and more from this game and Look, we've gone, what, 55-ish minutes, and it's it's an eight-point game, and there's been almost, there's been a combined 100 points of offense already scored today, and there's still five minutes left, and Keese has an opportunity untimed to maybe put six more up for the Crawlers. And that one will be caught inside the 10-yard line. Keese will cut past, tries to slip through one defender. He does, but he's met up by number 30 and stopped, and the ball will come loose, but they'll whistle him down near the 30-yard line. And Carl and Freeman makes the play, but Freeman something happened. Down. Winway, who has been all we've been advertising him to be all season today. We are officially over 100 points on the day, and they will rush to the, s the line of scrimmage, and he is brought down by five separate Baltimore defenders. They had to make that play, and that's a great play from the defense, but it's also a great play call from the offense. Keep it on the ground. Keep it manageable. Get yardage, because that play, a couple... Couple plays ago in the last drive, that went for nine to ten. If if, if the Watchmen have to play run defense, there's going to be openings for the passing game and the quarterback running, and it's Mark Bagway back there that they have to pay attention to. Second and nine, five in the box for the Watchmen, and it's Mark Bagway with a whole field in front of him. Bagway brought But down. it's Nick Mays. Nick Mays stepping up in the last waning moments of this game, trying to get the stop when it counts. It'll be third down for a, for the Florida Watch, the Florida Nightcrawlers, as the Watchmen putting up a huge effort here. Need to get them stopped two more times to get another crack and try to remake if what they Nick did in Mays 2022. If wasn't in the gym working on grip strength, Mark Bagway might score there. Nick Mays makes plays third and long, and here's Mark Bagway with the toss back. Bagway. Plenty of space in front of him. Is he going to throw it? offensive line play thrown down the field. Out of reach of the receiver, and it will be fourth down. What's the flag? There's yellow on the field, and it's not a Watchman jersey. Waving off the flag, so it'll be fourth and long for the Nightcrawlers here. With the penalty thrown, the clock actually stopped. But the clock should still be running here until the two-minute warning. So it'll be fourth and 13. And if they go for it here and don't get it, 
that will be one of the biggest blunders of the season, but the type of attitude, the type of personnel, the personality Do we see of this Baltimore Tampa team. Here? Do they try to do they try to hit the killing blow yeah, yeah. of what killed them a year ago? They can they they can easily just let the clock run down to a delay of game, let it go and then throw it let the clock run down all the way as you see it ticking, see it ticking. But what they have to make sure they don't allow is a first down here because the momentum shift on, on the, the – <laughs> so we talk about depression. Imagine how hard it would be. And, and here's a timeout, looks like, for the Nightcrawlers, figuring out what they're going to do. Might take them pretty close. I mean, if it's a turnover on downs, the clock does stop, Matt. But if they get the first down, it likely goes down to about 230 left in the game. That's exactly what they're looking for, but the Watchmen do have the three timeouts. They don't lose the game if they don't get the stop here, but as great as the Nightcrawlers have been playing all game and all season, Matt, up by eight against the team that they lost to last year. They have to make a smart decision. They have to control the clock and make the right play for their team, and it just, just so happens that on fourth and 13, they have the confidence in their offense that hasn't been stopped all game to go for it in their own territory with more than 10 yards to go for on a fourth down. And it's going to be Logo Davis playing quarterback. Now, the Watchmen have struggled covering Logo out of the backfield after the toss when it goes back to Bagway. But the stress that Bagway has put on this Watchmen defense all game has led to 54 points. They're going to need 13 more yards from him here. Fourth and 13, the toss back to Bagway. Bagway rolls out. He's at the 10. Bagway finds a block. Murdered Thrown somebody. downfield. Caught. He's got nothing but the sideline in front of him. The Tampa Nightcrawlers will not be defined by history. They will make it. Watch that. Touchdown, Tampa. Rico Brown probably has 390,000 yards in today's game. None bigger than that play. And when Mark Bagway was about to get sacked, he turned the field, allowed Nick Mays, and who, who is it on offense that absolutely murders a man? It's Deontay Henderson, gives him just enough time, and Mark Bagway, for all of the things we talk about, to make that 70-yard throw on the money, you can't ask more for a pl player in any league at any level and Mark Bagway has answered the bell every single play against one of the toughest defenses in the A7FL, regardless of what you see on the score. Two, two drives, like Baltimore has been stopped in crucial drives. They go There's for the Keys. conversion. And Did he, he come down not, with it? He no. does not. Logo Davis almost makes a highlight play, but it's a 14-point lead. This is a guy who's able to pinpoint his throws no matter how his body is running or moving or getting harassed, and he's been as special as any quarterback I've ever seen in this league, period. And with an untimed down, down two scores, it is now on Hefe Jones. He has been a key weapon today. He gets through one defender but gets tripped up, and they will be brought down at the 27-yard line. And that's Perkins again who has a return and two huge tackles because if Hefe can get free there, that's exactly what this Watchman team needed to keep it close. I feel like this game has been at two scores the entire game, it Matt. It feels like it. Bagway on the day, 15 for 22, 370 yards, six touchdowns. Rico Brown, seven receptions, 324 yards, three touchdowns. Thank you to Dave Silberman for putting those stats together. What an insane, like that's an insane offensive stat line against anybody, let alone the Baltimore Watchmen who... And we've been praising. The, we're the top, we're the top defense in the top division in this league. Yeah, and made teams like, I don't know, what the U last week not look great on offense. And if you're just joining us on Fox Five Point Two and wondering where the Insomniacs Chaos game, we've got a tight, close, contentious game. It may not look like it on the scoreboard, but with two twenty-six, a two-minute warning, and three timeouts left, Baltimore looking to re. Jigger what happened to them and reset the clock like a bad modem. The ball thrown, caught, and that's Jones. My voice cracking like Bobby Brady, but Jones not cracking under pressure. First down, Baltimore. And there's Buck answering the bell again. On time throw, Hefe Jones. If we look at his stats, he's probably up there for ridiculous computer Madden numbers. And it's the two-minute warning, Matt. And Corey Hammond... Could any other team in the A7FL do what the Tampa Nightcrawlers have done today to a Baltimore Watchmen team that has put up 46 points? 
not unless they have Mark Bagway under center. And, you know, credit to guys like Huff, credit to guys like Sterry, credit to guys like Scooter Hamilton. These are special plays, guys. On first and ten. Buck throws it caught, and he breaks it down at the 15. That gets them over. It's 800, almost 800 yards today, 765 com combined pass yards before that link up from OG Buck, Rokeen Chaney. Yeah, well, both of the quarterbacks for the Watchmen have been executing offense all day. 46 points is going to be enough in the, the, the other game to potentially win, in my opinion. Here's Buck again on first and goal. Cuts Makes a man through. miss. Be um, Chaney will keep it, and he gets hip-checked down, and there's a flag on the field, and Baltimore... D. West went for the ankles. He didn't go for the wrap. That penalty is actually huge because it'll stop the clock. But again, a minute, 27 seconds left. The game's not over, and it's it's yes, it's a two-score game, but with only five yards to go and a penalty which will stop the clock, first and goal from the two-and-a-half-yard line for the Baltimore Watchmen. They're only down by 14. And here's Amari Thomas. On first and goal. First and goal. The handoff to Omari Thomas. And Omari Thomas finds his way into the end zone. And eight points. Eight points. And we saw how how the last time these two teams played worked out. Yeah. And it you know is, what it was? It was a seven-point game, 49 seconds left. They go Baltimore special. They get the six points. They go for two. They get the two. They win by one. Game over. GG's. Go fly to where you got to fly to. Well, Buck is going for two points, and if he gets this, then it's a six-point game, and they can tie it with one more score. The snap. He's got Chaney time. Throws it to the sideline. Goes for it and can't oh. keep it going. It's it a keeps lateral it alive. Back, live ball. But that will be picked up. So now... Still an eight-point game. So they still have a one score. Now they're going to have to make that two. 60 to 52. Is if your identity is to go for the throat, changing it to play safe might be the wrong move. But here's the three-on-one. They got to get a stop here. And, and there's Keese. Yeah, I mean, Keese met by Sharp Jr. Rasta. And Sharp Jr. stopping him around the 25-yard line. No fumble. They keep possession. They do what they need to do. No time's off the clock yet. They're still only 82 seconds. And force the clock to run down and get that first. Let's see what they learned. The toss back. Bagway will run up field. He will keep the ball, and he will try to stay inbounds. He slides down. They'll clock will run down at a 111 and counting. Second down. If they get the first, the Watchmen don't have enough timeouts. Here's Mark Bagway again. Bagway. Rolls out. He fakes it. He will keep it. Clock continuing the run down, and he will fall on the ball, and it will be third third and two. He falls at the line of scrimmage, and the smart play there. Yeah, but the, he Baltimore had plenty of space. Baltimore will call their space. second timeout. Not a smart play because he cut back to the middle of the field and where he could have just accelerated and just forced himself to get the first down. Now it's third down. They call the timeout. There's 54 seconds on the clock. And it looks like my guy Lyndon Rowles is back in the backfield to see if he could punch through for this one yard. The handoff, and he will keep it going. That's Nick it's Mays all... makes the stop on third down. And with one minute it to go, the timeout called. And it's fourth and one, Corey. Oh, man. Because Mark Bagway is going to be able to get this two, two uh, yards if anything the happens. back on fourth and two. Bagway throws it to Logo Davis. Logo Davis with the catch. There's a flag on the field, but the play's still running. Bye! Bye! Baltimore if it holds! Logo Davis into the end zone! Route 66 on the way to Bullhead. If it counts, Tampa just punched their ticket. Let's see what the penalty is because if it's holding on the offense, they're going to take that back. If it's holding on the defense, nobody cares. We're not going to call yeah. this prematurely, but look at Ooh, the ball, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right on Ricardo Freeman. Listen, Ryan DePaul is in Ohio. He is not going to let that stand. We if were so holding. focused on Bagway that we didn't see what happened to, to well, Ricardo Freeman. who. Whenever you see a, a penalty flag in the backfield there, it's likely that it is a holding call. But if the watchman holds serve and are able to get the championship points... This game might even be longer. I can't wait. And it looks like 4th and 12. It's fourth. the offense that comes on the field for the Nightcrawlers. 48 seconds. This could be a disaster, but it could be the end of the game and the end of the season for the Watchmen. Two on the line. Four wide receivers. And it's Logo Davis who they asked to win the game for him. The toss back. That's to Bagway. Bagway with 42 oh, seconds man. finds he the seam. Everyone. He tosses it back to Logo Davis. The clock will keep running. Here comes Ricardo They're going four Freeman. corners. They're going four corners, and, and he the gets first the down. first down. Wow. 
And you know what? That's actually a great play call because you know what they've been able to do all season? Exactly that. They play keep away there, and look who makes the catch. When we're focused on Logo Davis and Mark Bagway, it's Rico Brown, and as the clock ticks down, and on a first down, it's going to stop real quick, but they're going to reset the down. This is great defense in most games. That's freight train, and he's forcing Bagway to cut back. Great block on Ricardo Freeman. For the first time in the nine seasons of the American Sevens Football League, a team not from the East Coast will be represented in the championship. For the first time in history, a team from Florida will be in the A7FL championship. We are going to take a timeout. We are going to find the other side of the his this historic twin bill at the end of five-minute break. We will be back in five minutes. Tampa said, watch this. We're going to the championship. Nightcrawlers move on. Back after this. This has been a broadcast of the American Sevens Football League. Like, follow, and share on our Facebook page at A7FL TV.